Hey, y'all. Let's put a rotary axis on my Avid CNC. Now, this is not a how-to video. This is more of a how-I video. Basically, I followed Avid CNC's instructions to the letter. Now, Avid has taken great pains to make clear, concise instructions, and they are some of the best I have ever used. Assembling the frame was pretty straightforward. Use the roll-in T-nuts and the fasteners in the extrusion and tighten everything up. This is the headstock mounting plate being added to the larger extrusion. Everything will be squared up and all the fasteners will be tightened up later in the process. The rotary axis uses linear rails for the positioning of the tailstock. It's a nice smooth system, but that's a lot of fasteners to install. Once the linear rail is installed, they are clamped to those positioning blocks then tighten down and the positioning blocks are moved. They're once again clamped to the positioning blocks and those fasteners are tightened again. Everything was torqued down to the proper torque per 8020 extrusions instructions. Everything is checked along the way to make sure the headstock plate is square to the linear rail. Now the Avid CNC uses a planetary gear system with very tight tolerance. And of course there was oil all over everything, especially the chuck. It's a self-centering four-jaw chuck that is pretty stout. The NEMA 34 motor is attached to the back of the planetary gear system and the coupler down inside is tightened up, ensuring a secure bond with the planetary gear system. Then it's time to mount the linear rail on the other side of the frame. These bolts are just snugged up because alignment will be done in another step.
The tailstock support is then bolted down to the uh, bearing blocks and these are positive stops that settle into the linear rail mounting holes to position the tailstock. Once again, the linear rails are torqued down to the proper spec. Then it was time to remove the old spoil board. This involved almost, but not quite, half a bazillion screws. More on that in a future video. I was then able to break loose the T-Track and remove it. I kind of cheated by using my track saw to cut the strips of MDF right over the mounting bolts. Then I would go back with an old beater chisel and remove those chunks of MDF to give me access to the mounting bolts. that it was a simple matter to remove them then I could get rid of the old spoil board yes a new spoil board will be installed I had set up my Avid CNC frame for vertical work holding across the front but with the rotary axis installed I needed to move that back to the front edge of the machine so, more on vertical work holding in the future. But for now, I need the rotary installed. That's my priority. Doing the final assembly on the rotary axis was pretty straightforward as well. There was nothing very difficult about this at all. Now here you're seeing the rearmost mounting extrusion. This extrusion will go onto this plate and that plate will bolt onto the back of the frame. The axis is mounted on the back edge of the frame with that angle plate on that aluminum extrusion. And these triangular shaped mounting brackets that fit down inside of the frame. These roll in T-nuts sure do make it easy to fasten parts to these extrusions. Then it was time to hook up the cables and get ready to configure Mach 4 for the rotary. Step 1 was to go into the configuration settings, go into my machine configuration and then tell it what type of rotary axis I have and which size rotary axis I have. Once I made sure all of that information was correct, I could then save the configuration. After that, I had to go into the Machine Setup tab 
and turn on the spindle with rotary axis. It is now enabled and ready for use. After the alignment procedure, Step one is, of course, to home the machine. Avid supplies the rotary axis with that eight millimeter dowel and uses the touch plate to align the CNC to the Y-axis trap. Go into the corner finding touch plate routine, set the diameter of that dowel, then make sure my calibration is set up for the rotary axis I have and the orientation I'm using. Then I can go into frame alignment and begin the alignment process. It will touch off Z, then move backwards to set Y. Then come over and touch off the X. Then it tells me to move my tail stock up towards the chuck and do it again. Once it's firmly snapped into place, I move the dowel up to the touch plate again and tell it to start probing. It again touches off the Z, then the Y, then comes over and touches the X, then tells me how far off I am. In this case, I needed to adjust the headstock in the positive direction and shim up the headstock by a few thousandths of an inch. We're going for a tolerance of within five thousandths of an inch. So after making those adjustments, you do the frame alignment routine again. The machine again probes. Once again, move the tailstock up to the headstock of the axis. Move the gantry into position and probe again. Once everything is within five thousandths, you are aligned. So that's it. That's how I assembled mounted and aligned the rotary axis for my Avid CNC. Now, if you are assembling or mounting a rotary axis on your machine, I would seriously recommend you get on Avid's website and you follow those instructions step by step. I didn't go over calibration in this video because it's pretty machine specific and you need to make sure you're using the proper method for your machine. Now, I'm gonna give Avid CNC a serious shout out here because they really went above and beyond the call when it came to their online instructions. Everything I have ever built following Avid CNC's instructions has been top notch. So thank you very much to Avid CNC. So where do we go from here? 
Well, since I've added the rotary axis, now I get to create a new spoil board. So that'll be the next video. Now I know there's no way I answered every question you're going to have about this rotary axis or the Avid CNC or anything else I've covered in this video. So this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where you can ask me any question you'd like about the rotary axis, the Avid CNC, or anything I've covered in any of my previous videos. Again, that's this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've already put a link to that live Q&A down in the description box of this video. I'd also, before we wrap this up, like to say a special thank you to all of my channel members. Thank you for your continued support. Now, if you'd like information on how to become a channel member, just look down there next to that subscribe button and click that little button that says join. A panel will pop up and a video will play that'll tell you all about channel membership. So, I hope to see everybody this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, whether you become a channel member or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Y'all take care.